Hi guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today is a very exciting day because you're gonna be seeing me have platelet-rich plasma injections, also known as PRP for hair growth. As you know, since the age of even actually beginning of medical school, I was losing my hair. Someone tapped me on the back of the shoulder and said, hey, by the time you finish medical school, you're gonna lose all your hair. It didn't happen because I did a few things and we're gonna talk about that as we go on. But PRP is something that I do in addition to some of the other treatments I do to maintain my hair. Okay, so what is PRP, Tina? So PRP, platelet-rich plasma. I'm taking your blood now because I need your plasma so that we can inject into your scalp. And what is your plasma? Your plasma is the spun down, concentrated version of your blood very heavily rich in platelets. And the platelets are used, and the reason we're extracting the platelets, we're using them to inject into an area, and in this case, your scalp, but it can be injected into other areas of the body, as we know from, from treating people in hospital, yeah. um, from regenerative medicine. But in this case, we're trying to track growth factors to the area. Platelets are involved in clotting the blood. They're involved in healing. They're involved in attraction of growth factors. They're actually one of the first elements of your blood that uh, go to a wound, that go to an area of injury to heal the area. So they're the, they're the healers, basically. They then they, they, call the on, they call on other healers to heal the area. Yeah. So like, um, you can use it in skin. We use it yeah. post like CO2 resurfacing laser to help with uh, wound healing as well as increased collagen deposition as well. But then when you're gonna increase, inject it into the scalp, you're also going to get that establishment of new blood supply, opening of blood vessels, call of growth factors that are all gonna help grow your hair. Um, so like in what conditions would you normally kind of inject PRP? PRP is, um, is a great first line treatment alongside topical treatments for the scalp. Um, what you're trying to do is essentially stop further hair loss. Uh, one of the reasons for hair loss is um, a reduction of blood supply, possibly induced by testosterone. Um, or metabolites of testosterone, but you're also attempting to thicken existing hair. Now, it's very important at the early stages of hair loss treatment that you can't actually increase the number of hairs. What you're trying to do is decrease uh, the loss of hairs and increase the thickness of existing hairs. The only method currently available to increase the number of hairs is actually a hair transplant, Absolutely. Uh, which we consider to be the sort of final stage of treatment. So like, remember, like, there's two processes that are going on you could get miniaturization of follicles, and that's when the blood supply to the hairs reduces, and therefore the follicle, the hair shafts, also become finer and finer. So if you see these small like baby hairs in the area, that's what we call miniaturization. And miniaturization is something that um, actually is, you find in like male pattern hair loss, female pattern hair loss, the other things that you see is like shock loss, right? So shock loss post-surgery, so it could be anxiety-related hair loss, it could be COVID-related um, hair loss, and it could be hair loss related to essentially surgery or any changes, physical or emotional shock. And PRP is, well, in my experience, fantastic for that too, because you do that after the surgeries, right? Indeed, yeah. Um, so yeah, this is just obviously PRP treatment. So what are you doing here? You're just injecting a normal protocol, right? Which is yeah, so I'm injecting what we uh, call, what we term interfollicularly, uh, yeah. so in between the hair follicles. Um, I'm leaving roughly a sort of uh, one and a half to two centimeter circle between uh, yeah. the injections. How does this feel currently, Doctor? I mean, you just feel the needle going in and some sting, but you kind of like get used to it within the area and then the sting quickly subsides. Like it's still stinging like right now, it feels yeah. like you're in, but. So remember, we are injecting your spun down blood back into your system, yeah. so it's an auto graft. Um, so essentially a graft back into your system. Um, we're using a four millimeter needle, that's quite important. Why is that important? Well, basically you're not going any deeper or more superficial than you have to, because we want to obviously be stimulating the blood supply at the base of the follicle. And that generally, from when we do hair transplants, is around three to four millimeters. So that's the kind of best area that we really want to target. So, um, and, and you can't go wrong if you do it at that depth. I found that actually you improve certain even uh, scalp conditions such as seborrheic dermatitis um, and psoriasis as well can improve with PRP treatments as well. And there's actually very good evidence for that as well. Um, PRP has been used for a couple of decades now. Yeah, absolutely. And how often would you do these treatments, do you know? I roughly do them about three to six weeks apart. 
um, and we normally do three treatments before leaving an interval. Yeah, so we do the three and then have a gap between. So a question we often get asked is, yeah. is this uh, worth having before hair transplant or immediately after hair transplant? Well, I always say it's better to have it done immediately afterwards. Um, so certainly the specific time which you want to do a treatment such as this is immediately after you've made the site, so the areas where the hair goes or just before implantation, just to start that clotting cascade. And it does help. It makes the follicles a little bit more sticky as well. Um, don't forget some of the holding solutions that we use to put grafts in. You can uh, use PRP within that too. And we do that uh, as a standard um, for nearly all surgeries. And then afterwards in the recovery pay, uh, stage, you can also have PRP to help with recovery. So that was a uh, PRP treatment. How did it feel? I mean, it just, it did sting at the beginning and then you kind of got used to it towards the end. Obviously, sometimes we use a vibration device just to distract from the pain, but obviously you're pretty mean to me. So I, like... Yeah, I didn't think you needed it, so um, <laughs> just kept it in the drawer behind there. So tell me, Dr. Solomon, what is the aftercare? Very straightforward. For the first two to three days, just avoid direct contact with the area with any abrasive devices, avoid the sun. Um, yep. Generally avoid any anti-inflammatories because we want to stimulate some inflammation. So ibuprofen and all this sort of stuff. Ibuprofen, if yep. you're on steroids and you don't need to take that for the next couple of days and avoid the anti-inflammatory steroids. Um, and that's about it. It might feel a bit sore for 24, 48 hours, um, but generally uh, the aftercare is quite simple and recovery is very quick. Okay, so perfect. So in summary, normally here at Dr. Mendy Spa, we do like kind of three treatments, four to six weeks apart, and then a little break after that just to maintain things. You can do it all with other, other handy hair loss stuff as well. So like topical medications, etc. LED light, you can do it with two. It works synergistically, so the combination is better. And generally it's kind of like, well, a, a very simple treatment to perform in about 20 25 minutes and you can go back about uh, your day very very easily just minimize exercise and definitely no anti-inflammatories because you're stopping the way that it works so don't forget like and subscribe this post if you have any questions specifically about prp just please let us know in the comments below you can have a look at some of the before and afters that we're showing as well and if you have any other questions about any hair loss stuff just ask us too because we can always make new videos right